Hello fellow 3D enthusiast. Today I'm going to walk you through all the visual effects of creating this little clip here. And it took me about a week of on and off work to get this completed. So I have a lot of footage here that I'm going to try to edit down into a nice manageable bit. And I'm going to try and do that in an afternoon, so let's see how this goes. Before we get into that, I'd like to tell you about this completely free hydraulic kit bash elements pack that I've created for you. There's a link in the description, and if you like doing hard surface stuff in Blender, these should really help you out. So I started out with some live action footage of me jumping off the deck with my awesome siblings holding the camera and passing it off midway through very smoothly and then I made sure to get some extra pictures of the surrounding scenery so I could have some clean plates later on. My next task was to create the portal which I did by adding a displacement modifier to sort of a cylinder looking thing. And for the texture coordinates of the displacement modifier, I parented that to an empty and then just made the empty move infinitely off into the background so it would give it some motion. And here you can see I added in some crazy procedural textures. I actually duplicated the cylinder and scaled that in a bit so I could get this crazy lightningy looking texture and mixed that with some alpha so it stood out. And many of the textures are mapped to that empty that I talked about just a second ago and so those are moving as well. I also dropped in that digital double from a few tutorials ago, so if you haven't seen that, you can check that out. It looks pretty wacky, but add in some motion blur, and it looks a little better eventually. Then I started working with the camera to add in some motion to that, and also at the end of the teleporter portal thingy, I imported an image as a plane and gave that an emission shader so that it was bright, kind of like the footage, and I ended up blending that in later down the road. Then it was time to match up the digital double and make sure that was in the same pose as when I started the jump off the deck. And then I just blended that together in compositing and rendered that all out as an image sequence. You can see here I sort of stitched those two parts up with the actual footage and the craziness. And as digital double transitions go, that one wasn't too bad. Then it was time to take the latter part of my original image sequence and start tracking that. And my game plan here was actually to sort of erase the deck and house so that in the final product it ended up looking like I was just jumping out of nowhere or just like dropping out of nowhere. My first attempt at tracking was around a 2.5 solve error, which wasn't that great, so I dropped it down to 1.5 a little bit later. So after I got the tracking sorted out, I started in dropping more images as planes and adding those in the background sort of as a clean plate. And I was using this tree a lot just to sort of match things up and figure out how to put them back together. Eventually for the middle part I did some texture painting and just painted a black and white image and got some fading going on the sides of it just to influence the alpha and blend that together with the two panels on the sides. Then I dropped a plane in on the ground and subdivided that quite a few times. Sort of gave it some bumpy texture, sort of like a hill or something like that. And then I just projected the UV map and put that on my clean plate from a little bit earlier. And bam! Realistic grass. And you can see here as it moves, the chunky track was still going on. Fixed that a little bit later. Okay, inside compositing, I dropped down an alpha over node and then just put the alpha under ironically, and that just gave me a good idea of how it was going to look eventually. Mmm, bad. I kind of fixed the chunky track here, so that's cool. For some reason, when the camera was constrained to the tracking constraint, it wasn't showing motion blur in Eevee, so what I did was hit this button here that says camera constraint to f-curve, and down on the timeline you can see immediately there's a whole bunch of keyframes, and the motion blur is working now. Then I did some masking, and here's how I hope it will look eventually. It didn't, but that's okay. You can see in the compositing, I've got my main footage here, 
and switching back and forth between the main footage and the edited out clean plate uh, gave me the motivation to do all that rotoscoping that I'd have to do in a second here. So if I hop into the mask editor here, you can see the super impractical mask that I made in a few minutes, and the slightly more practical mask that I made of the deck and house area. Now I don't want to hand animate this giant mask all over the place, so what I'm going to do is just parent it to a tracking marker, one of the bird feeders up here, and then I'm just going to do some finer adjustments just to make sure everything is still fitting where it's supposed to. And now I have to rotoscope this weirdo out, so I'm going to start by adding in some tracking markers, just to give some anchor points for the masks that I'm going to be adding in a little later on. Looks like those are sticking pretty well. Now if you hit tab, it will toggle masking mode. It's kind of like going from object mode to edit mode. And on your side panel, you'll see a tab that says mask, and there you can find layers, which end up being really helpful when you're breaking your mask up into pieces, which I definitely recommend doing. So I'm gonna start with the head and get a basic mask going. Once again, you can hit Alt-C to close the circle of the mask, and that will finish it up for you. And now I'm going to add in a new layer, call that the face area, and just work on my face area. You can see up in the layers there's little arrow icons, and that will make your mask layers selectable or unselectable. And if you just want to focus on one, that can be super helpful to turn on the others off. Now here I select my masks and hit Control p with the, one of the trackers selected after that, and that will parent the masks to the tracker, and that will save you a whole lot of time. Then it's just a matter of enabling automatic keyframes and making adjustments along the footage when needed. Here's a hot tip, in compositing, if you enable motion blur, that'll make your masks look so much better. And here I've pretty much got all the moving pieces all finished up. I would say this might have taken around two hours. It wasn't actually that bad since I had trackers and there was pretty minimal motion. But yeah, that's the joy that is rotoscoping. <laughs> Alright, so in the compositor I'm just going to give you a quick view of what's going on here. I've got my mask layer of the actor and my original footage. And I'm actually subtracting my mask layer of the actor from the mask layer of the deck. And that gives me this look. And I'm using that mask to mix the original footage with the clean plate that I just tracked in. Here you can see that my first test render. The mask actually had some holes in it, so I patched that up and did it a second time. I noticed that the clean plate was sort of off color in some parts of the animation, so I just dropped in some color ramps and animated the factor value so that it would affect them differently at different points in time. I noticed in my first test render that the tree on the clean plate was actually too far forwards and it was sliding a bit, so I moved that backwards quite a bit. I cranked up the blur amount on the deck mask and that was actually getting me these lines because the line was a little bit too close to the deck and the original footage was starting to show through a bit. So to fix that problem, I added in a Dilate Erode filter and dropped that on the mask. And the more you turn up that factor, the bigger the mask will get. So that sort of had the mask cover up more of the deck, and then I didn't have the lines as much. So you can see some test renders here of it just getting a little bit better every time. My next step was to add the Vortex Crazy Thingy portal into the background. And I started doing that by making a crazy smoke simulation vortex thing, and just rendering that from the top down. That gave me this. And then from there, I created a fairly simple object, just out of a circle, and sort of shaped that up to be sort of the end of the portal. And for this, I created a new material that was an emission material, and I added in the image sequence that I had just created of the smoke simulation as the texture. And I just unwrapped the circle thingy to be over top of that animation.
And then I roughly placed that object in the scene where I kind of wanted the portal to end up. I had to make sure it was on its own collection and view layer so I could put that back in in the compositing. Then I dropped in a displace modifier and gave that a new clouds texture, which I promptly mapped to an empty that was infinitely scrolling into the background. Kind of similar to what I did in the start with the big portal. Cool. Now you can see here it's pretty important to actually turn on the image sequence inside the material, you know, setting the frames of the animation and everything like that. And then I had a lot of the motion all set up. From there, I rendered out a test that looked like this, which I was pretty happy with. And then I realized the final result was actually blue and orange, not blue and green. So I decided to switch that up and actually make that look quite a bit more like the original portal. So I copied that out of my other scene and pasted that back into the current one I was working on. Then it was a matter of lining things up correctly and just getting them moving right again. I got this weird thing. The edges were a little bit sharp for me, so I worked on smoothing that out. I generally try to avoid the procedural gradient texture like the plague, but I sort of needed it at this point. I got that to line up and sort of fade off the end of the tube thingy. And of course the colors weren't really lining up that well either, so I sort of had to jigger those around quite a bit. And I got this, which was a little bit bright and too saturated. It kind of wasn't working out so well. Usually the brightest object in your scene should be the sky, which it was actually a little bit brighter than the sky, so I had to chill with the brightness. Okay, home stretch. I stitched everything together in the video sequence editor and rendered that all out as an image sequence. And then I brought that back into the compositor just to give some overall effects that would sort of stitch everything together. You know, you got your distortion nodes, your color balance nodes. I dropped in a tiny bit of glare. And I also used a ellipse mask and blurred the crap out of that just to get a nice vignette going on. And that was looking pretty good. I just needed to add some sound design. And hey, one last thing, when you're working with actual footage like this, it's a good idea to go into the render tab and under color management, set the view transform to be standard instead of filmic. That will help out quite a bit because if it's filmic, it will be all wonky. Anyway, look at this. Okay. Right, so I hope this was helpful. Next week, I'm going to be getting back into some hard surface modeling stuff, and I think you'll like it quite a bit. Other than that, I'll catch you later. Cheers!